Hey YouTube, it's me Brandon Colonel again. The next video that I've got for you guys is a, a fairly special video to me. To me personally at least. Reason being is because this is actually my first full custom knife. Now, it's a, I'll tell you this much, it's not like the the $4,000 customs that you'll sometimes see on Jim Skelton's channel or anything like that. But this is still a custom knife in its own right. It's made by a name a name. It's made by a man named Raymond Johnson, who I actually had the pleasure of meeting at Blade Show. A very knowledgeable man and a, really just a pleasant guy to talk with. Um learned quite a bit from him actually while I was talking to him and uh, quite frankly I would consider him to be a friend at this point because uh, it was that pleasurable talking to him and I, I enjoyed and actually talked to him a couple of times at the pit um, as for this knife in particular um, if you're looking specifically for it as far as I can tell um, he doesn't have a, a standard name for it but I actually kind of harangued him for it a little bit, and it, uh, and eventually he named it for me on the spot, which I'll get to in just a little bit. But because uh, there actually is a story behind that. But as far as what he's calling it now is the curly. Now, the knife itself is a 52100 stainless steel, or not stainless, 52100 carbon steel, which is made from. Uh, ball bearings, but I was uh, coming to find out with him that uh, apparently not all bearing steel is actually carbon steel, nor is it even all 52100. So some people get get bearings and uh, just immediately think, oh, this is 52100, make a blade out of it, find out that it's crap, and then they blame the steel, saying, uh, oh, the, this steel was crap, I don't like 52100. Come to find out, maybe they had some of the stainless variety that's like 440C. This is legitimate 52100 that he gets from a reputable supplier, and if I'm not mistaken, he said something to the effect of that they they forge it out into a bar before they give it to him, so therefore he can do with it as he needs to, without having to to shape it from being a ball bearing into a bar, and then mold it into the knife after that. Uh, let's see. The uh, coating on this, because it is a coated blade, it is uh, sandblasted. Uh, and I do have a couple of notes down here, because I, I made sure to take a lot of notes on this one. Um, it is sandblasted, and then it's tumbled in a ceramic medium, which gives you a really nice finish in the end. I still do prefer a satin blade if I can get one, because it, even this, as you can see, after a lot of use, is starting to scratch up a bit, which um, I don't know where this particular splotch is coming from, as that you can see right here. For whatever reason, sometime after I got got back uh, back into Lagrange, that splotch started to form, but I can't get rid of it. It's not rust. Uh, that much is that much is clear, but I can't seem to get rid of that. Um, and I actually recently got uh, some Aegis solution, which this is what they call the HDCI solution, not the EDCI. I don't quite know what the difference is, but I know that this is like heavy duty. Uh, well, heavy duty corrosion inhibitor, but I don't know what the E is supposed to be. Maybe every day. But either way. Uh, basically, it, it didn't clean it up as well as I was hoping it would. But, uh, but it did clean it up a little bit. The Stingray wrapping underneath is actually legitimate Stingray, which, if you can see the white underneath there, then you can actually see where it actually has been dyed. So that that actually does go to show that this is legitimate Stingray. Um, as far as the edge goes, here, I've got just a piece of receipt paper here. There we go. So as you can see, this is incredibly sharp. Yeah. So the, this knife is incredibly sharp. I have touched up myself. Um, 
from him. I will say it wasn't the sharpest that I would have that I would have ever used, but sharpening it up really wasn't a problem after that, and I got my standard finish on it, and it was phenomenal. So everything that I could have hoped for, it worked out very well, and I didn't have a single problem. Um, now it is incredibly sharp, and it, using it for for extended periods of time is actually quite comfortable. Um, it is more comfortable, I'll say, in in like a, uh, a backward grip like this. So that way, if you're doing draw cuts, it's it is a little bit more comfortable. But this it still fits the hand very well, and it's not a problem. Um, as far as the curvature goes, um, about right here, um, unless you're twisting your hand with it. Uh, the cutting performance does start to drop off just a little bit, but not by noticeable amounts if, it, say, you're cutting cardboard or something like that. If you're cutting paper, at that point you will start to notice it a little bit more, because as you can see here, um, about at that point it just kind of dropped off a bit and and kind of fell out of the paper. But if, it, but if you do kind of pull your hand with it, like just arc it a little bit, then... Um, then it, it makes up for it without a problem and you don't even notice it anymore. So, after a little bit you kind of get used to that and it, and your hand just naturally follows that arc. <clears throat> uh, let's see. He was saying that that the uh, paracord wrapping, because uh, I do believe he said that he used paracord, um, he used a double twist wrapping in order to make this. And, it, like I said, it, it feels really good in hand. Um, I don't believe that he has it, any kind of um, any kind of resin in, in, soaked inside of the handles, which, quite frankly, personally, I actually am quite I'm quite happy about, because pulling out my obaki, which I've got it somewhere behind me here. One sec. Well, I don't seem to see it right here, offhand. One sec, let me pause this. Okay, I'm back. Found my obaki. Took a little bit longer than I thought it would. But, um, I know that this was actually resin soaked, and it, it actually makes the handle just a little bit uncomfortable, due to the fact that, um, that now all of the ridges on here are basically immovable. You you really can't even touch these. At which point, if you're hard using it, it digs into your hand and it makes it fairly uncomfortable and you don't want to use it. And it, heaven forbid, you wear this thing uh, on your side, particularly um, if you modify it like I did to the point where it's vertical carry and then you wear it without an undershirt, it chafes against you and it it is just massively uncomfortable. Very useful blade, terribly bad resin soaked handle. And I think that I might have said as much in the, in the review of this. So the fact that this is not resin soaked actually makes it a lot more comfortable. It's It, it stands out every bit as in high relief for all these ridges, but they just simply provide grip at that point. So it actually works out. I enjoy that. So, the fact that this is not resin soaked means that it might not last as long, but in the end it makes it more comfortable. So, I do appreciate that. Uh, let's see. The handle is, well not the handle, but the, the sheath is made out of Kydex. And I actually do have one, one more thing that came with up here. Um, it actually comes with a, a a horizontal carry belt clip, which um, which you can mount on. I'm just got to there we go. Which you can mount on either side, like so. Uh, right now, I've got it rigged up with the belt loops that I've made, so that way I can carry it vertical. Which this is the way that I prefer to carry it. Basically, the belt goes in this way, and it's hugging against me like that. So that way, it really sandwiches it in nicely. 
Then I've got um, a small lanyard down here, which basically what I do then is uh, just say that this, that my hand here is my belt. I wrap it around like that. Go once behind, underneath, and then it around back like that, which, um, if it weren't wrapped around my hand, it would have more. But then, once I go around, then it, um, basically, I just put this through here, and then I cinch this tight. Because I do have a bead on here, where I can cinch it tight. And so, the, just a grenade pin bead that I'm using which I actually got off of a contest for the knife that I'm actually going to be reviewing immediately after this which is Lightning OTF so expect to see that shortly after this review is posted this is falling all kinds of which ways and I'm not even noticing it but yeah so as far as edge retention goes while it's not the best edge retention I've ever seen which few knives will ever come close to the best edge retention I've ever seen. Um, it held, it holds up really well. Um, I think that I was uh, cutting half of a lawnmower box with this thing while I was also testing my, uh, my custom knife factory muscle. And this thing was able to go through technically about a quarter of the entire box because it made it through about half of the entire box before it started to, to show noticeable signs of wearing. Um, it could still cut, but it was starting to tear. So it, it made it through a really decent portion of very thick, very hefty cardboard. And for that, I actually say it did incredibly well. Because it, quite frankly, this actually cut through more than I usually put through most knives for testing. And the two knives that I bought at Blade Show, this and my and my muscle. Um, I ended up putting those two these two knives it through more testing than I usually do, because the M390 I wanted to see what it can handle, and this being my first custom, I wanted to see if it's worth the money. Now, as far as prices go, uh, I won't exactly say what I paid for it. Because um, because I ended up getting a bit of a deal off of it, but um, but what I was seeing that that he charged initially, at least at Blade Show, um, a lot of makers actually were charging less than what they usually would at Blade Show. So so that may still be the case yet. But what he was charging for these, uh, while at Blade Show, was 125. Quite frankly, I think that's well worth it. Um, this is a, a phenomenal knife, even for $125. I would gladly pay that again. And uh, and just so you know, uh, just looking at it now, I actually realized that I didn't mention this. The logo here is actually his new logo. So let me let me see if I can get that into just a little bit better focus. Yeah, it's uh, Raymond Johnson Knives. And so. So yeah, that is his current logo. You can actually find him on Facebook, and uh, and you can see all of his knives. He does a lot of really interesting stuff. And, it, and had I had a, just a little bit more money, I probably would have bought a couple of the other knives. But um, but if it, if you're really into the knife scene, you'll probably recognize it, this type of shape as a. Uh, um, as uh, one of the CRKT designs um, that Lucas Burnley did, actually. The uh, Akari and uh, something else. Now, Raymond Johnson actually had a design that was basically the same as this, um, that, that he was able to date back a number of years earlier. I think that he was saying that he came up with this design about 10 to 15 years before Blade Show, uh, or at least before this current Blade Show, and it, but because it, he's not quite as well known, he he does have a following. Now, to not not saying that he's not a, a, a known maker, but uh, 
but because he didn't have quite as much of a following, he he was saying that he didn't want to 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 pursue anything and and step on anybody's toes because he couldn't legally date stamp it and say I specifically did it at this time before anybody else did. He doesn't have any kind of a patent on his design, and so he he really didn't want to cause any trouble. And he was just like, I'll let this one slide. I may have made the design, but hey. Don't want to step on anybody's toes. And for that, I can actually appreciate it. Because it, when you cause trouble with somebody over intellectual designs, when both people came up with it independently, the best you can do, it, if you can't completely prove one way or another that, hey, this was my design first, it's best not to cause ripples. At which point I can actually respect him for not doing that with this. So essentially, if you want to get a much higher end version of the Akari, this is the way to go. This is a, a just a flawless example of of what a knife should be. And quite frankly, it's been a, it's been on my belt quite a number of days, except for maybe just a couple here and there, where I just simply wanted to carry something else. At which point. Um, only two knives ever actually graced my belt since, which I do have more than just two belt knives, or more than three, technically, but only, basically the only three that ever, that ever do grace my belt are these three here. And this one more so than this one, because... This is a, another fairly custom-made knife. It's still production, but it's still um, more custom than production. But yeah, this this knife over here has spent the majority of the time on my belt. The only times so when when I'm not really wearing it though, or when I'm at work, how it actually rides is uh, fairly comfortably. It's uh, it's actually not quite as comfortable in vertical carry as either of these two. Because it, um, with the wideness, then it, if I start to to bend or flex various ways, then it, it actually will kind of dig into my side just a little bit. But keep in mind, it wasn't designed for vertical carry. So, so I so I do keep that in mind. At which point I modified it the the way that I'm doing it just a little bit, so that way it, it rides just a little bit lower. I made a little bit more slack in here so that way I can push it down and therefore it actually almost completely eliminated all that problem and um, and also the way that it curves back just a little bit um, again when it was when it was riding higher then it kind of it dipped into my side a little bit but uh, but again pushing it down almost eliminated all of that so if you do plan on modifying it like I did and that basically here's the setup that I did. I just put put a knot through this end, and then it followed it down into one side, looped it over into the other, and then it put that over onto this side. So fairly simple setup. And then I just got a like a small lanyard, um, just to loop this through this way, put that put that down through the loop and pull tight, and then it just gets some kind of a bead. At which point, like I said, um, just loop it around it as such, and then that you've then you've got a really tight belt loop fixture, so that way you can carry vertical. Otherwise, the horizontal attachment, which is right here, it actually does work quite well. I just find that it prints on my shirt, and I don't like the and I don't like carrying vertical or horizontal because it, the knife ends up printing too much. And it, when I'm carrying a belt knife, I don't want it to advertise the fact that I'm carrying a belt knife. So, at that, I do kind of want to hide it. So, any knife that I have must be uh, redesigned for vertical carry. I did it with with um, my Obaki. I can't seem to think of any of the names of my knives for, for whatever reason today. But yeah, so I'm, I modified the Obaki. I modified my my knives ranch blade 
and now I've modified this one. And I also modified the uh, the cold steel that I have. Daggone, I can't think of any of the names. Um, whatever the, the cold steel boot knife that I have is, it, I modified that for ankle carry. But yeah, either way. Long story short, this knife is absolutely terrific. Go and check out Raymond Johnson right now. Buy up multiples of his stuff because it is well worth the price. And it, make sure to tell him that I sent you. As always, YouTube, stay safe. Okay, I just actually realized that I forgot to tell you the story of how this got its name. Basically, after I was uh, done taking uh, all of these notes, and uh, then I actually ended up coming back to his table, because um, I wanted to, to have a name for it. I'm... I am... Just a, a very, very high on wanting a name for a knife. I am very big on that. A catchy name is uh, probably going to sell me just as easily as the knife itself. Um, now, granted, a name alone won't sell me, but I'll probably look at a knife more if I like the name. And so, I started asking what he what he called it. And he was like, well, that particular model, I don't really have a name for it. And so, it was like, okay, new final question. If you were forced to name the knife, what would you name it? And he kind of smiled a little bit, looked at the other people at his table, and was like, um, hey, what would you name this knife? And it, and the person he looked to was just like, yeah, I don't know, I don't name knives. That's not something that I do. I wouldn't know the first thing about trying to name one. He looked at the other person at his table and was like, Hey, what would you name the knife? Um, this guy over here is wanting you to, to name the knife. Or just us to name the knife. And the guy thought for a second and then looked at me and was like, You're one of the knife named, right? Yeah. Well, why don't you name it and come back and tell us what it is? And I thought about it for a second. I'm like, Okay, I think I might just do that. I'll probably come back to you guys tomorrow with a name. At which point, um, I ended up coming back. I'm not sure if it was later that day or if it actually was the next day, but I came back, and um, and then the, he was like, "Hey, do you have a name for it yet?" You know, I actually don't. I've, I've put some thought into it, but I can't think of anything that just immediately strikes out to me as uh, as uh, what this thing should be called. He was like. Well, that's good because I've actually got a name for it that I that I want to see if you like. And he said, "I want to call it the curly." And instantly, I was like, "That actually sounds decent because with the curvature of the blade and just the entire handle overall, it sounded fitting." But he proceeded to explain why. Apparently, it, uh, a while back, he actually had a friend. Uh, who was an excellent businessman, and it, apparently he was uh, uh, he was well off enough that he could basically just drop down a couple thousand dollars like it was nothing. Him dropping down twenty five grand was about the same as us giving a friend twenty five bucks, maybe even less so than that. And it, he was saying that that even though he was an excellent businessman, he couldn't read or write. And so his wife took care of all of that, but he took care of the business side. And it, and it, for whatever reason, this knife reminded him of his friend, which apparently his nickname was Curly. And so that's where this actually came from. Okay, so that is it, is everything about this knife. And now, as always, stay safe.